Where did that come from? I think it's a new thing. Yeah. Okay, awesome. It's a new feature of Zoom. They do that when you start and stop a recording. That's brand new. All yeah. right. Well, awesome. Everybody, we're, we're, we're recording. You want to press continue? Yeah, I did. Okay. Right Welcome, my... Santa, you know. Right over my face, Susan. <laughs> Does that matter? <laughs> it's like, we wanted to see your face, not my face. All right. Yeah. I guess I'll, I'll, I'll clip this first part anyway. All right, Jean Warren, our, our guest critique artist for this uh, period, uh, a set of fresh, I see I can't even say it anymore. Uh, <laughs> a fresh <laughs> set of eyes member critique, awesome. And Jean has been very gracious in accepting, um, doing the critique for us. She is a longtime member of our uh, society and certainly a long time, wonderful, fabulous artist. We're gonna have Jean um, with us next year for a workshop. And at this point, we're deciding whether it'll be online or in person. And um, if any of you have seen her artwork, she is fabulous and she's a wonderful teacher. And everybody at the very last workshop just could not get enough and wants her back so badly. So um, Jean, I'm gonna let you tell them a little bit about yourself because you could probably do a better job than me, but Welcome and thank you so much. You're very welcome. Um, let's see, I don't know, I didn't rehearse this part. <laughs> um, I've been painting for probably 40 years now. <laughs> That's pretty scary. And um, I fell in love with watercolor by plein air painting, really. And I've, over the years, um, I paint all sorts of things. I, I think realistic, but slowly but surely my paintings kind of um, veer towards the abstraction um, because my philosophy of painting is rather um, in the process of painting and not so much the product. So I really love painting and I want to share that with everyone when I teach. And I've been teaching for all those years too. Um, and so that's kind of my, my philosophy is the, the, the process of painting will get us to where we want to be. We, we might, might start off with an intent of our, and usually we, we sit down in front of a scene or we have something in mind from our sketchbooks that we want to paint. And maybe the intent would be to use certain colors or to have a, um, a design that we're really wanting to use, a horizontal design or a radial design. And that might be our intent to start off with. But then as we paint, we, let, we kind of let, I believe, or I like to do this anyway, to let the paint be our guide in this. And so, when you put the paint down, we actually respond to what the paint is doing to tell us what to do next in our painting. And so often, oftentimes, maybe the intent in the beginning kind of gets lost and the painting itself kind of leads you in different ways. So that's the, the really the fun and probably why I've been painting for all these years, because every painting is different. Every painting um, lends different um, problems and experiences that I have to get through and solve those problems as I go. So hopefully we'll, we'll talk about some of these things too, maybe as, as the critique goes on. But um, I guess that's in, it in a nutshell why um, I'm, I mean, as far as my career, I'm, I'm um, a signature member of the National Watercolor Society and California Watercolor Association. Um, I was president of that group two years ago when it was called the East Bay Watercolor Society. And, um, and then I belong to the Society of Layers in Multimedia. And that group is really experimental and um, mostly abstraction. And um, I 
sit there with a pen, pad and pencil when, when we have Zoom meetings because they come up with all these really intuitive ideas, really fun. So anyway, um, so enough of me. Let's see what everyone has been painting. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and do some screen share and we'll get started. So if you are one of the people who are having a critique and you are here, um, as Jean comes to your painting, go ahead and uh, you can unmute yourself and ask her any questions. Is that okay, Jean? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. All right. So here we go. All right. So can everybody see my screen? Yes. yes. Okay. So. Yeah. Perfect. All right. First one. All right. We have it's all yours, Jean. Barbara, she may not be on here. She was one that you were weren't sure if Barbara could come. Um, so the original um, we notice and beautiful colors. I really enjoyed looking at those colors. Um, the, ba the vase was pushed over to one side and I was asking her, why is that? Why did you do that? I kind of want to know what her reason was. Um, and if it were my painting, what I would do is to put that vase more in, in its own environment. I kind of want to know, is it sitting on a table? Is a window behind it? Um, things don't have to be perfectly defined. Um, so we might just want to have lines to, to suggest that something else is going on in the painting, not to take away from the painting, not to take away from the vase, but um, just to kind of um, define that space for the reason of putting that vase in, in, a, in an environment. It's kind of floating right now. So, um, and I guess everyone can read the read what I said too, right, Susan? Yes. Yeah. And so I said I suggested to 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 kind of um, straighten up that vase might be good because we're we're wondering if it's going to tip over a little bit. <laughs> so okay. And then her next painting, mm -hmm. kind of um, this one there was a kind of a blank space maybe on the other side of the rose but this works so beautifully because of that space is defined there's although we don't know if it's deep space or shallow space um but because of the the leaves down there it really breaks up that space into different um sizes and it's makes it quite interesting and even though we said only one painting would be critique, Jean graciously wanted to show both. So you're going to see both images from everybody because she's just so nice that way. <laughs> I told you, and I couldn't help myself. I had to. Move <laughs> them. But, so, but even, so even though you might not have a critique, there might just be comments or something. Yeah. And and often times, your second painting kind of illustrated what I was asking you to do in the first painting. <laughs> you know, you did it. So um, anyway, you'll, as we go on, maybe that'll, you can see what I meant by that okay. too. Ready? Ready, yeah. <laughs> All right. I think Chris is here. Chris, if you want to unmute after she goes through, after Jean talks. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Chris, I really enjoyed this painting and I'm glad to see your photograph too, um, which really helped me because, so the one place that I circled, the lower area that I circled, mm -hmm. um, corresponds to that white shape behind the flower, mm -hmm. which I thought was a really, I'm sorry, my yellow line is sort of covering up your white space. Nice. Well, I guess we can see it in the original. I love that space because it it really helps to um, it blends in with the flower shapes quite nicely, and it's um, it, it's a really nice shape. So I didn't want you. So 
when I have my yellow outline around it, I don't want you to change that shape, but I'm thinking maybe if it were to be a little bit shaded somewhat so that it's back in the, in the background more so that we see this flowers a little yeah, bit. So it pushes it back. Yeah. yeah. To gray it a little bit. Thank you. That's helpful. And then the top mm -hmm. two flowers, the, the top that I have the top circle. <laughs> um, I was saying yeah. be nice if that maybe I was thinking if that those two flowers could be combined somewhere somehow so we don't see those two yellow circles as sort of like eyes looking at us so if it were my painting I'd sort of make one of those yellow centers um lighten it a little bit maybe okay yeah. okay you'll see the the two um centers but one would be um less so a little bit lighter Say what else did I say here? Um, That's great. Thank you. That's really helpful. And I think I said something about maybe subtle touches of the yellows and the oranges mixed in the background might be really interesting. Mm -hmm. So that the um, um, so that the yellow wasn't just in the flower centers. So that we had some. Okay balance going through the background too just a little bit okay that's great. i think because mm -hmm. when we're there in person um we probably see little flickers of yellow in those leaves and, and you know some other colors being reflected um besides the and, and you do have lots of different colors in the background but i'm, I'm thinking maybe some warmth mingled in the background might be nice okay Great, thank you. Sure, fun painting. Very helpful. No, well, good. And if you have any questions, and I always say that um, when I'm critiquing my students, if they don't agree with me, they need to say something because I used to, I used to do that when I when someone was critiquing my paintings. I don't, you don't, as an artist, have to agree with everything the teacher is telling you. And um, I think it's good for you to be a rebel <laughs> and say, no, I, <laughs> no, I did that because, right? So stick up for what you um, believe in in your painting. You, you might have done something for a different reason. So everybody, let me know if that happens. Um, um, Jean, I, I have a question. Um, in the photo reference, there, there was quite a um, large dark area over toward the right, right hand or left hand side of the um, painting, and I didn't put that in. Would that be wise to paint in some more darks there? Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't think, yeah, I didn't even notice that until you said that, say that. Um, not necessarily. I think when we're making, okay. when we're doing these paintings, we mostly want to think about how our eye travels. It's called the track of vision through our painting. Mm -hmm. we want to, mm -hmm. and I'm a person um, like Barbara Nietzsche and a lot of other people who don't believe in a, a center of interest so much, but we mm -hmm. kind of think of our paintings to have um, um, a a track of vision so that we maybe land in places a little bit longer, but then we go to other places. Maybe we speed through the painting in some places and maybe linger a little bit longer in others. And so we don't necessarily have to have a center of interest. I know that doesn't answer your question, but um, so that dark, if putting that dark in, would that help with this? Um, track of vision that we want to have through the painting. I don't know, I suppose it might in some areas, but I think your painting doesn't necessarily need that dark. Okay, great. Thank you. That's very helpful. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next. Yes? Next one. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Susan. That's okay. <laughs> I should say next. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. 
So then, um, so your next painting, you were wondering um, about the, uh, let's see, I can't remember what you thought about the background, but you, what I thought was um, maybe graying part of the background might be a good idea, just like the photo it is showing. And then, and then we're also wondering, I'm also wondering about some of your edges, maybe especially in the background there, could be softened, softened a, a little bit more. Okay. So they don't, when we have hard edges, your shapes are going to come forward more than they are going to recede. So, so that's why, and you can see it in the photograph. See those top edges are sort of soft, soft, softened. Mm -hmm. They're not lost. They're not lost like in a watercolor, but kind of softened. And then, and then I said maybe even punch some of the. I don't know how you could do it because those colors are so bright anyway. But the colors in the foreground maybe could be punched a little bit more, um, just in a couple of tiny little areas. Okay. So that's also a beautiful painting, and I I love the um, the looseness in the background that you you put in there. That's interesting. Thank you. I got the um, texture in the top of the painting by spraying, you know. Yeah, so once I put some paint down, then I sprayed it and it helped to, you know, disperse the paint. Uh -huh. That's interesting. Great. So, and so we have to decide in our paintings, do we want them to have depth or do we want them to be flat picture plane kind of paintings? So this now is kind of a flat picture plane, meaning that the background has the same is the same in value as the foreground. Mm -hmm. And so that by graying it, you would set it back and give it more depth. But um, <clears throat> but you could go either way if you like it without the depth. We don't always have to depict what our our photo is saying either, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a great suggestion. Thank yeah. you. Very helpful. Good. Um, Jean, um, Barbara, I think Barbara Ote uh, just came on. Would it be okay to go back to hers? Mm -hmm. All right, let's see if I can get back there. There. Barbara, um, if you're on, if you could unmute. Um, Jean went through this before, but she's gonna graciously do it again for you. Thank you very much. Quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, Barbara, so I was saying, um, <clears throat> I was wondering if you could give the vase, which is beautifully, I love all the colors in the flowers. If you could give it, give us some environment, tell us where it is and it's in it's in its environment. In other words, is it sitting on a table? We kind of think it may be because of the little shadow down there. Um, but what's is there something behind it? Um, what do we what do we know about? What do we? I kind of want to know more about it. So that's why my lines were over there, and I said, um, <clears throat> so how what what ideas? Well, you know, put put a window back there. I'm always sometimes somewhat at a, as a at a loss doing still lifes too. What would I put as a background? Uh, and you may not want to be too definitive about it. You might just want to have shapes that kind of um, repeat the flower shapes back there. Something to suggest where it is. And then if we can go to the, her next one. <clears throat> Oh, and then I said, um, straighten up your vase a little bit too, might be yeah. a good idea. But then in your next one, Barbara, um, I this was really illustrating what I was saying about your the vase was the, the um, shapes of the leaves and that they, the shapes that they made with the background, beautiful shapes. So that this is um, well-defined, this is very balanced um different than the other painting so i i kind of know more now about what's happening in the whole space of this painting 
And even though I don't, I'm not sure if it goes back in space, but it, it's beautifully balanced. Um, so that's what I was hoping, um, suggesting in the other painting. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay, sure. Do you have any other questions or comments? No, that's great. I appreciate it. I looked at that first painting. That was pitiful. <laughs> I got a lot to do there. So, yeah, so this one, so even some simple leaves like you have in, in this painting mm -hmm. the other would work, I think. I think so, too. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. All right. We will move on here. We saw Chris's, and here is Cindy. Cindy, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Yay. So uh, this painting is um, really fun. I like the, the shapes in there. One, the, the, one, the shape, though, of the flowers seems to be all one shape, and it, it, to me, it's kind of moving diagonally off the page a bit. You're helping it stay in the page by the darks that you have there in, in the leaves. But I was wondering if you could um, kind of with some darks behind some of the flowers, make your, put your, uh, combine, let's see, just kind of distill those flowers into three different sizes, you know, to kind of organize the shape a little bit better, I think. And so, and, and then because it's, Kind of that shape going diagonally through the page i was thinking if you had and you were asking me too i think about stems do you need more stems and that would help too to have some vertical lines some so see my vertical lines in there so so some stems going through might might help it too to keep our eye our our interest inside that painting rather than zooming out of it <laughs> And your your next painting, well, we, um, what's that? Um, those black lines. Oh, those are Susan's lines. Because <laughs> when if you're reading the um, what I said here, oh, I, I see. Okay, said, um, it was just the point to where she's got her vertical lines for stem, I believe, right, Jean? Okay, okay, I see. Just so the grouping. So I have to read what I wrote here too. The the grouping, I think, might help this mass of flowers to be a little bit more organized. And so, so your like next- I paint the darker and back to define the flower areas. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, kind of like you did in your next painting. Oh. <laughs> if, okay. um, yeah. there, there's, there's. So here you did that. You um, see the darks that you put behind the vase and behind the flowers. So that's what I'm talking about with your other painting okay. to kind of put some darks and they don't have to be real dark darks. They can just be uh, layers of um, transparent colors, transparent um, cobalt mi mixture um, to kind of group those flowers. Do you, do you agree that that was kind of my idea just to um, and maybe not even three groups in the next painting, but I mean in the other painting, but to organize that space a little bit better, I just because this painting is uh, sorry <laughs> yeah to, to organize the space a little bit um, more so that it's not just one big space and it doesn't have to be two and you have. You do have some darks in there now, now that I see that. Um, but maybe the, the need, it needs to be organized a tiny bit more. Okay. Uh, that makes sense to you. Yeah, it does. And what do you think about the centers of the flowers? Does I mean, I guess I see what you, you know, it just feels too, too loose everywhere. Um, you could have some centers, yeah, some some darker, some brighter, more intense centers, maybe <clears throat> make them different colors, not all just the red ones. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. And some of the and so some of your flowers too, in the um, in that whole thing are kind of they're at kind of the same value, mm. pretty much. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of them. So maybe in it, instead of putting the darks or the shading behind them, maybe some of those flowers could be more intense, more more paint, more pigment on them. That might help too. Okay. Yeah. Has a lot of potential because it's a fun painting. <laughs> right. Okay. So the next one, I think I said everything. Um, yeah, I don't think you need a focal point here. It fills the whole page. Um, the values and the edges um, are fun to. You, it feel. I love the way it fills the whole page in this this painting. Good. Okay. Any other questions, Cindy? Um, okay, so you don't think I need more definition between the flowers and the stems? On this painting or the yeah. other? On this one. More definition. So to, oh. You know, you know, like I have those stems in the background, then they run right edges of the flowers. Flowers, yeah. I, it, that never bothered me until you just said that. <laughs> um, maybe you could in a couple places, but I wouldn't do it all over. Okay. There's, um, boy, if I had a pointer, I could. <laughs> so there's that one, I know. <laughs> You're worth and I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> do you see that one flower kind of at the top that has kind of green in the middle? That I'm in the stamp. Oh, yeah. Now the, keep going to your left. That down and then down that stem. That's kind of interesting. The way it meets that flower. Don't do anything more with it. <laughs> okay. Um, and I wouldn't. Yeah, maybe just a couple stems. You could do that. I understand what you're saying, but um, it's kind. Of, you know, once we start fooling with our painting in one spot, then that makes us see. Oh, I should do it over there too, and then. And then it turns into a way different painting. Okay. To me, this is a very consistent way of working throughout the whole painting. I bet it didn't take you very long to do this painting, right? I, it didn't, but I cropped it. You know, I mean, it was, um, the picture was sitting on a table, you know, there's all kinds of other stuff. So I, I realized I just kind of like this one part, cropped it. And, but then I, again, I just wasn't sure what the stems, if there should, there should be more in there. I. I got, I just got stuck. I, I, I like it the way it is, yeah. but you could, so if you want, if you feel you should do something, go ahead and do it. And that's the way we learn. And then afterwards we think, oh, I shouldn't have done that. But that's how we, <laughs> you know, that's how we, um, we learn by trial and error, especially with watercolor. So, cause we can't fix things. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then that makes us go and do something else. Maybe then if you made a stem darker, maybe that would say that the flower in the front of that stem needs to be brighter. You know, it just leads us on to the next thing. Next thing. But. Yeah. And there's, do you, do you, would you do anything to the centers? You know, there's a couple, you know, where I put a center in it, but a lot of them don't have any kind of. I wouldn't. Okay. Well, yeah, okay. All right. Well, thank you. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Next. Yeah. Jane, I think you're with us. It's Jane. I'm here. Yep. Okay. Good. So you asked if you thought there were too many masks. I don't think so. They're all very um, interesting. They all have their own little personalities. And I love the way the the shadows are falling on them in the in the light. The only place I found a little um, um, awkward is where I put those yellow lines. So you could make that blue mask um, run the blue over to the edge of that the yellow line, and so essentially what 
to, to do would be to get rid of the, the in between the blue and the white mask to to lift that out to or to maybe you wouldn't even have to do much lifting to bring some of the yellow up in there to make that to give a um, a walk through with the yellow make the yellow come in between those masks and so then that white mask would may be more of a straight up and down or have a little wiggle to it it, it just seemed they were um those two masks were too it, it, it's, it was kind of a bullseye i wanted to keep looking there <laughs> do you know what i mean because here's the darkest dark next to almost the lightest light there in the painting and it's in the middle of the painting and i wanted to give them it's kind of an awkward shape that that white mask what that white mask was doing kind of moving over in front of that blue um so so that space in between already ready i think bring the yellow in there and then i would say well you already did sign it i think it's a great painting it's a really interesting painting i love the clothespins <laughs> well that's ex exactly how i felt about that center i kept going to it and saying i feel very uncomfortable about it oh good <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah i'll give that a try okay good yeah and your next paint oh that's good so no other questions about that one huh no well okay. oh, oh, except just about the blue the blue mask whether it, because it is so dark compared to the other masks whether if I were to do this painting again or try something similar, whether I would just focus on having things that are more the same. Yeah, not so much of a contrast. Well, maybe um, you, you might try now that you say that you might even scrub out a little bit, a little another shape on that blue mask, maybe down at the bottom by the um, orange area. Although, yeah, maybe just a little tiny shape or something. Oh, it was, like that. yeah. It was so blue. Um, but no, you know, it's kind of a mystery. I love paintings that you kind of one wonder what, why is there only one blue amongst all the white ones? <laughs> <laughs> So I think it's fine to have that in there. Okay. Uh, yeah. So next. So in this painting of yours, um, I loved it and there was hardly anything to say about it. And But then as I started looking at it, you have this really dominant shape of, um, this horizontal sweep shape because of the flowers and and your background, which is wonderful. But then I was wondering that poor little flower down at the bottom, could some of that dark blue and from the background be brought down <clears throat> maybe to the right of that flower a little bit so that it's sort of right there. Yeah, in there a little bit <clears throat> so that it becomes a part of <clears throat> Excuse me. Do you see the way your blue is in between the two flowers? Yes. Kind of that um, granulating kind of a blue. Or if that were brought down just a little bit down to, wouldn't even have to meet that flower, but it would, would be almost saying, "Come on, you can be a part of this painting too." <laughs> it's sort of kind of left out a little bit, although it seems pretty important down there. Uh, so I just wanted to think that maybe some of that blue could be brought down a tiny bit. And then the flower up at the, um, on the right hand side, I'm just wondering why that, um, whether the, a couple of the edges could be lost a little bit, not too much, but, and maybe some color brought in there or even some purpley gray brought in there where Susan has the, the arrow. Um, not, a lot, not a lot, but it seems because it's so white, like it wants to be of an important. It's, I think, important for your whole design of the painting. 
Uh, I see that, and and I think it it you're it seems like more prominent and more important than the larger yeah bloom. So my eye goes there and stays there for a longer time. So yeah, yeah. maybe I, yeah, that's a, a it should it's easy enough to do. Yeah, maybe even some green brought in there too would be really unusual. You want it to be part of the painting, but you don't want it to take away, like you say, from that that flower. So just a little bit of tweaking in this would be okay. really fun. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? No. Um, great comment. Okay. Good. Thanks. Next. Next, Susan. Well, Lima, I think. Hi. Yeah. Are you here? Yes, I am here. Wait, I will have Turn on my camera. Okay. So, Lalima, was this a painting or is it a collage? Of it's a painting, absolutely. I am very intrigued by the quilting work by Alabama Woman, and I am making, putting it as completely a watercolor painting. Wow. <laughs> it's amazing. Thank you so much. I am uh, too new to this world. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so, so what I'm going to say will be harder because it's not just pieces of paper, <laughs> but what yeah. I, you were wondering if you had too many pieces in there and I don't think so, but what, what was bothering me a little was that they were kind of all the same size or majority of them were kind of all the same width, you yeah. know, and then, and then some of them were even the same length. The um, so I was saying maybe the the big black and white one could be a little bit wider, and and then okay. the blue pieces that have the other circles around could, they seem to stand out as having the same length. So if you do this again, or um, you know, think of that, and then and then the two pieces on the black and white but they're different kinds of stripes on the right hand side of it they're kind of the same length too okay i think you can have some that are the same length but a lot of these seemed um like the same size or okay. kind of thing and maybe it is um the fact that there are a lot of different stripes and circles and a lot of things going on in this but yet i really love the painting and I, thank you I'm, so much i'm really being picky about it <laughs> um so i would put this aside i wouldn't do anything since i know now that it's a painting i wouldn't do anything to this painting i'd put it aside and then just think about those things for your next painting okay thank you yeah. um okay any other questions or no i i what i i don't know i uh, you know i went and learned quilting myself and i did quilting and when we used to do quilting okay we used to iron the seams so well that there was never you know we would not see the seams in there actually we will not see the folds of the seam when we are making the quilt but i don't know i just felt that do I have to bring those textures of those seams along or not? That was my only concern that I made this painting. I got pretty good textures of the fabric, which is used in the quilting, but was not sure that there are small seam, uh, you know, folds of the, along the seam line, which you get when you make quilting. So <laughs> that's my question was actually. Oh, wow. Well, if you want to show that, you can. I mean, you can do anything. I, I don't know. I was not sure. That's what I'm saying. That you didn't sometimes, want yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I That's just amazing. It's an amazing painting. Yeah. It took you a long time, I bet. <laughs> no, actually, it did not. <laughs> How good is it? Do I know? Do, do you know? Do I know the size? This is a. Uh, this is uh, arches uh, i think it is 11 by 14 or something like that okay so wow. not very big not very big but yeah very little small brushes too yeah 
Yeah. I'm pretty good at it. I do folk art painting. So I am trying to widen my horizon with respect to, but my, these intricacies come back to me. Oh, wow. Well, it's very, inter very interesting. <laughs> so really nice. And you had another one. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah, the windows. So I was wondering, um, the the photograph showed yeah. a, a rectangular, more of a rectangular window, and you you made a square. Did you? Yeah. Do I did not. I just sketched myself. Like I just sketched whatever turned out. I just did it. Okay. Yeah, I do, I really don't have any um, comments. Okay. Um, hmm. Fun painting, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 I feel happy that I did a good job. Yeah. I mean, you could, it, you know, you could put shadows in there and different. Um, it's nice that you're not following the, the the original so much because the original looks like you know there's is it dirty and there's some maybe some shadows and yours yours is um quite different so that's good that you're making yours different than the no i think i don't know <laughs> okay <laughs> all, right. all right next thank you so much thank you lavon are you here i don't think i saw lavon oh really okay so I had a lot to say on this painting. <laughs> yeah, um, she'll watch the recording. I, I, I didn't hear from her, so. Yeah, good. Um, so this is a horizontal painting, meaning that um, it's everything is taking place horizontally. And, and I thought it was, and I liked her water and, and my eye was just drawn to the water. It's beautiful. And I kind of like the idea that all the color was on one side and not the other. And that was probably what the photograph showed. That, so that was interesting. Um, I thought she could, there's a boat over on the right-hand side that's kind of in the shadows. And I was wondering if we could um, at least maybe make that mooring post um, a little bit lighter, maybe scrub out some of the black so that we can see it better. Although maybe she wanted that to be more of a subordinate kind of a thing over there. I don't know. So I kind of had also, um, I was wondering about the buildings. So when we have, um, when we, when our line of sight is looking at a front of the building, we don't often see the side of it. But here, what she's done is really played up on one point perspective. So all the sides of the buildings are going back to a, a vanishing point way back there behind that white bridge. Um, so our line of sight, so the, the fronts of, of buildings are facing us. But when our, they say, or when our line of sight really sees the edge of the building as well. So then um, I'm wondering if it's more of a, if, if it could be a, a two point perspective um, problem here, because then um, our line of sight is at the corner so that we, so then it's hard to do this without. So where I had that circle, the front of that building, I'm wondering if it could be brought down to another vanishing point over to the right. So like like this, Jane? I mean, Jane, going like this? Maybe like not that. slanted, maybe just a little bit slanted. Like a little like that. Because when I say, yeah, just a little bit. Because usually... Um, when we see the front of the building, um, that's that's facing us. Um, it's whatever is perpendicular to our line of sight. So, I mean, and, and I even brought a box along to show her. Can can you 
Can you look at me, Susan? Yeah, I'd have to stop sharing. Hold on, I can do that. Okay, there you yeah. go. If we had a box like this that we're looking at, and we can, if you go out and look at your, our houses, you know, you can see this too. As soon as we turn it like this, to go to have this go back to um, a point way back there, we're actually turning this part too again. So this isn't, so our line of sight is focusing more here. And so, and it's, you can see actually, instead of being these lines, the top and the bottom being horizontal, you can actually see them changing a bit. And so that they're, they'd be probably going off to a vanishing point, but they don't have to be so extreme, like we would see it like this. But um, I hope I'm explaining that right. So that yeah, you right here. You're coming down to a diagonal right there, yeah. and then over here it's diagonal too. That's is that what you're saying? You got your point right there at your corner, and mm -hmm. then. That's diagonal down a little bit. And then that's down a little bit. So one point perspective talks about the um, that there is a vanishing point going way, way back, you know, where the all those buildings converged. And it's hard to do this with the camera. <laughs> um, but then as we see more and more of that side, we're kind of changing the front of the building in that we're making it more of a two, two point perspective. And I know her, um, okay, you can go back now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and, and I know in the photograph, it probably looked exactly like this. And, and I've been noticing things, um, as I ride by in the car too, looking at buildings, they they don't not really obvious that that front of that building would go back in it, to another vanishing point, but it does. <laughs> you know, it's got to because it's a square, a box, right? Um, anyway, I just asked her to watch that in um, in terms of perspective because um, I mean, this is Susan. Do you think perspective is one of the hardest things for us <laughs> painters who maybe don't have total, total drawing skills, you know, to master it? I find it difficult. Yeah, I can remember um, a teacher I had who made us, um, we had to draw all these um, boxes and books. It was books upon books in perspective. And just by doing it and you're having a, her horizon line is where um, it's where your eye level is. And so her horizon line is at the um, bridge. So, yeah, bridges or where, yeah. Right and there. So that vanishing point where all those buildings, the sides of those buildings are converging way, way, it's way, way, way in the distance. So that's fine. Yeah. But the front of the building, even though it's going to look like that in a photograph and probably when we're there, it's going to look like that. But if it's turned, if that whole box of a building is turned, that front will have vanishing points off to the to, to the way, way, way off on the on that horizon horizon line. Um, anyway, just something to think about. But this is a um, really. But I love the water, and I said something about um, Levon, Levon, Levon that we. Um, I like to kind of um, what to decide what's going to be what's going to be important in my painting the most um, important not to have a, a point of interest but to really tell the viewer what it is that I'm excited about in this painting and to me it's all about the water and the bridge and so then maybe I would um, kind of lift out some foggy shapes or something in the side of that building, maybe even some in the front. I would make the building less so, less important. This building? In the water. Yeah, the, all the buildings. Oh, all the buildings. Okay, yeah. Not, not a lot, but just um, have some shadows and some lifting of shapes, 
so that um, so the build I, I want to look at those buildings, but yet I would rather in my estimation, I think the water is so gorgeous that I would rather have my concentration be on the water. But that's kind of a long explanation for um, for this. And Yvonne email me and we can chat about this some more if she wants to. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell her. I don't think she's here, but when she watches the recording, I can have her. Yeah, right. Well, she'll, she'll hear me say that too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. All right. Let's see what Let's else. She, next. Yes, and then she had the, the rocks, and she was asking about values. <clears throat> and um, so she kind of has them <clears throat> already. I would just make the values that she has a little bit more more so, more intense, more um, dark. Maybe the the um, the ridge of um, uh, rock in the foreground. Maybe they could be a little bit darker. And then she has kind of over to the right in the middle. Those could be darker, but not as dark as the foreground. And, you know, so to make them stand out too much yeah, here. Yeah, all the way across the front, maybe she could have, uh-huh. Okay. That could be a little bit darker or with the same um, pigments that she's using. So I wouldn't change the colors, but just make them more so, make them a little bit more intense, more the, just crank up the values on them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that'd be, but it's a really a nice composition. So Marika, hi. <laughs> Rick is here. Rick is here. Hi. Hi. Um, <laughs> so I love this painting, and I said this kind of painting will um, just holds discoveries and surprises for you as you go because it it it's um, very creative. I, I was a little bit um, concerned about that little tiny circle because I keep looking at it. It's kind of too much of a bullseye. Maybe I would just make it a little bit bigger. Um, and I and you were wondering whether the circles and the squares um, fought with each other, but I think that that doesn't bother me. In fact, I would make more circles. <laughs> and because I would and then mainly though, this painting I think is lacking in differences in values. I would make the one, the values that you have that are dark, make them darker. Then it's all kind of mid value now. So I would make them, I, I wanna see more light, mid and then dark values in this painting. Yeah, I took it and put it under the shower and washed it all off because I had it at a point where it just felt so heavy and overworked. But what I was trying to do was, you know, where there were intersecting shapes, change the color or the values of those. Um, mm -hmm. So if I add more circles, then the circles would be more dominant, right? Well, then you can keep going back to the boat and making that dominant as well. And, and then the window, I keep playing back and forth. Um, making more circles, I'll let that be your choice. <laughs> I think I think the main thing is that I, probably what you washed off is probably what I want you to get back into. Huh? <laughs> I would just have, um, see if you can make the values um, different values, darker, and the, the greens could have some more colors in the in it too. Yeah. Yeah. Just, we could mix some more. I see that some of the, the trees in the back do have some um, brown or orange in them a little bit, but I would make everything dark. The darks that you have now make them darker, the mid-tones, or leave the mid-tones. Mm -hmm. um, Although what you're going to have to do is make the mint tones darker and then where you want the darks, make them even darker. And then the mid tone, the, uh, and then the lights just keep them light, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That make that makes sense. And I think I was being so, I don't know, there's something bugging me about it. So I was 
be I wasn't being when I was painting it I think I was just being too wishy-washy about it right and adding layers and then adding layers and I think that's just how it got too heavy and I just need to be more direct right yeah and you wouldn't have to completely paint around a circle or you actually didn't like one one circle you could paint around it and then the circle itself you could paint maybe go back oh, and within the circle within the circle maybe the interior yeah yeah um yeah and maybe you could paint around a circle and then leave the other side the way you have it you wouldn't have well you kind of do that as well um i this is a process painting a total process painting and the more you do the more you're going to see and 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 maybe you will decide that you want more cir circles or maybe you'll even paint over a circle yeah i kind of had i had kind of had the feeling that the circles would be kind of transparent in a way yeah. you know so the background would show through them i mean it doesn't necessarily have to end up that way but when i started that was that okay way because it was it was the window and the model boat in the window that was all based on a photo and then I changed the colors and mm -hmm. and wanted to create more I wanted to keep the representational part of it but make new shapes okay so now you gave me an idea so the see the circle to the right of the boat mm -hmm. for instance I would paint those trees first I would paint the trees, the ones, that, the other circles in the in that window that have trees. I would paint all the trees, the background first, make that really heavy paint, and then and then see about your circles, to, and then and then paint around the circles after that. Oh, okay. So paint the interior of the circle first, yeah. and then the the basically the negative space around the circle yeah and um, maybe a little bit of, of the circle maybe not the whole circle okay. and maybe same with the boat you could um i don't know um if you want to make the boat darker or not because i would see what the background looks like if you want to email this to me anybody can email these to me mm -hmm. uh, i don't know how susan's gonna do this afterwards when people are but yeah that's what i think um might be a neat idea do you mean, do you mean after they after they make changes mm -hmm. you want to see that you okay yeah that's easy to do if they want to email me uh you know the image after they make some of these changes sure Did, didn't john have that happen to him yeah didn't somebody come yeah definitely oh okay yeah because that might be fun to do it that way, Marika, now that you're talking about that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, next. Good. Next, please. Thanks. So this was an easy fix. So the, I love the dogs and I love the colors and, and the stamping, I guess it was, that you put over them is- Pencil. Huh, pencil? Stencil. Pencil. Oh, sorry. Uh -oh. <laughs> um the so is this is easy the the dog on the left is forward and we know that because of his ears and the feet and so what was troubling me was the white on the other dog looked like she was in front of so the top part of that white just right just above the at where susan put the arrow i would just um gray that out mm -hmm to push it back and i think that solves your whole problem okay because i felt like it was close to done i mean okay. I, feel, I feel like the dog on the left i did have some drawing errors in the head i mean because i know the dog right the ears aren't that huge and the, the from the i think from the eye to the top of the head is too elongated oh but because you know the dogs they're dog but and then i felt like 
the the eyes on the this is just technical stuff right on the le, on the left dog i could lift parts of it out because they're too solid looking but i couldn't there's something that was bugging me about it and i guess it it's just what you said like yeah. i couldn't, i couldn't put my finger on it and and this to me is like you know 80 percent done it's close to done yeah, very sweet <laughs> yeah but the only thing i would do is just above where that arrow is yeah um just gray it out or um, you probably want to gray it or something you don't i don't i'll let you figure that out but yeah that white were different in there okay okay thank you yeah next <laughs> oksana i'm not sure if she's here either oksana are you here nope no well i thought this was a delightful portrait and the shadows of the face um the, the, and because the shadows alluded to me that this was um, a simple simplest simplicity and innocence and I think the the flatness of the hair all all was so consistent that I would not do anything else with this um, and I said you know if if you were to add shading or do anything different, it, it would change the straightforward quality of this, this um, portrait. So I think it's perfect the way it is. Very sweet. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And the next one is seems like a different kind of a portrait altogether, because now we know more about this person. We, we know she has more of a rounded face. There's more definition with the shadows of her face and and her hair and um, her her garments and you know it's all um, her pinafore and her bows. You know, help just to, to describe her. Um, she's very sweet, and I wouldn't do anything more with her either. This tells us a lot about her the directness, the immediacy of the watercolor. It's a perfect watercolor. Um, it's, uh, it says what it has to say, and then it gets out of there. It doesn't say too more, too much, too more, too much that we're wondering about. It's just um, direct and simple. And um, this little girl is precious. <laughs> Yeah. All right. <laughs> Next. Marsha. Marsha. So I, th I think you said she couldn't come. She said she was traveling. Yep. Um, okay. How do we get these people to come here? Uh, um, so it's it, this is rather illustrative and maybe even some would call it decorative in that there's no real um, or a center of interest. I don't feel that paintings have to have center of interests anyway, but um, but yet we we do travel in and around this painting by looking at the um, what the leaves are doing and what the background is doing too. We do kind of travel in and around, and some of the leaves um, on second look at at this um, they do really overlap one another and. Um, and it's very interesting. And if she were to add color to the leaves, it would change the whole appearance again. So this kind of painting would be fun to do as a series. Um, this would be maybe first in a series and then her next series, she could have other colors being introduced or some or other values um, to me there's just like two different values here light and dark um, but it's very effective and um, and yet and even though we have the background light and dark back there um, it's rather I, I said a kind of a shallow depth of field it doesn't go way way back way way back in the distance at all so if we want to do that in our painting this is what this is how we should do it, I guess. 
So, okay, next, next Susan. Yep. Oh, someone's, yeah, Sue said it reminds her of a batik fabric. That's true. So here, um, Marsha went a little bit further and she divided up the space like a stained glass window. And um, so even though the background kind of flows, if we really pay attention to the background, it's kind of, although some places it changes, um, but yet. Hey, Mrs. Susan, do you think this is a collage of her shapes? Maybe it could be. There's a couple of places on there that look like they're cut, huh? Yeah, now that I'm looking closely. and and. Please note, everybody, she's got it mounted. Both images were mounted on a black board. So that's not act like part of the painting. It's just her mounting. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, so this is interesting to me, too, that um, by dividing up the space in the, these, these ways, so it goes back and comes forward, and we quite don't know what's happening. And so there's that mystery there too that that makes this, um, I think, a little bit more interesting than the, than the other painting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Nice, very nice, and all the different shapes, tiny shapes and different shapes. Very nice. Okay, okay. good. Tony, I think Tony, you're here. I'm here. Yep. Okay. Good. So this is um, Tony's photo, and she was asking how she could get. Um, Oops, sorry. I should read what you. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um. She was trying to capture the early, I want to read this because it's specific to the what she wanted to do. Early morning fall scene. She wanted to know how she could capture the early morning fall scene that is in the shadow from the mountain, but didn't capture the lighting right. Um, so she wants the foreground to be um, cool. So in contrast to the brightness uh, and the and the warmth of the back hills. So I suggested that maybe a very transparent wash of cobalt or maybe with um, some purple in it. So I'm looking at what color you already have in the foreground and it's mm -hmm. not only yellow, but there's some yellows and browns in there. So using a complement of those colors, um, maybe I said a purplish blue kind of a, a wash over top of that would give you the coolness that you want. And that would contrast with that um, warmth in the background from the early sunshine on that on the back. And then um, over on the right, and I don't know if you can see that because on my computer, everybody's on the right. I can see it. Oh, people can see it. Okay. On the right, I kind of um, made a line to go around the right hand side tree and then the tree on the upper left. I don't think you need those right on the edge of the paper. Oh, okay. Um, this we see oftentimes in photography. People will kind of zero in on a scene and think that they need the trees to kind of frame what you're doing. Right. Um, and I want to kind of push. <laughs> I, can't, I can't quite see what that left looked like, but I know I remember what it looked like. Kind of doesn't. It, it, you kind of wonder what's over there and what am I missing out of the, the painting on, on both of these. So I would I kind of leave them out. I don't think they help to have us, your fence and the trees and the way this um, uh, landscape, the design, the composition going back in the distance is keeping us in, in this painting very well. I don't think you need those other things to, to hold us in the painting. Um, and then the, the fence, 
So remember, this is also um, perspective. The, the right-hand side, when you have the horizontal lines of the fence, so they should, as you go back in space, they get the vertical lines then get smaller. And so that space in between should look like it gets a little bit. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. yeah. You can see the difference in looking at the photograph. Yes. They really get bigger as they go back. So that yeah. might, that'll help. Um, and then we've noticed. Yeah. So did that make sense about overlaying the, the transparent wash over the foreground? Yes. Yes, it, it, it did. Uh, I definitely want to try that. So I think that's helpful. And also your other comments, the, the, the bordering trees on opposite edges aren't necessary, like you said. Mm -hmm. you know, I was too fixated on the photo and, and the horizontal lines of the fence needing to get smaller as you go into the distance. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Next, Susan. So this is a beautiful painting, and the only thing I thought was that you were wondering if the um, the background con um, not contrasted, but if it conflicted too much with the foreground. I think, and what I would do is to soften. I think I said soften the edges, but maybe soften all of the trees. You know, the the whole the body of those trees in the background. Even though I know we want they, when we look at them, they seem to really pop from the hills, the California hills, but um, soften them them a tad versus let, because I think they kind of conflict with the foreground a little. Okay. And then um, the foreground is gorgeous. I think these um, where Susan has the green arrows coming up kind of forms an arch right there. And I yeah. kind of got stuck. So maybe, maybe the that one, there's one tall grasses, the, the two tall grasses on the right hand side could be softened so they weren't so you no know, lifted, you know, so they weren't so obvious. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. I just I think my grass is just too they're just too thick for grass. Um yeah. too thick too, yeah. Okay. I bring is over in front of them maybe so that then they wouldn't be so um obvious you know so okay versus some of the grasses in front of that and maybe that would solve it too great because thank you for that thing. okay yeah. hey i think that's it end of slideshow end of it see it wasn't so bad to do two paintings susan no it wasn't at all so um oh. i'm up the share. Yeah, no, I agree. It, it actually did pretty good. So, so can um, I ask a question? Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. So I have a question about highlights and eyes. Could we look at the dog picture again, please? No, I think he passed it. There. <laughs> so my question is this. Um, I have heard some people say the highlights in both eyes have to be in exactly the same spot on the eye. Mm -hmm. And they aren't in this, this picture. Um, and so my question is, what's your opinion on highlights in eyes? Do they have to be exactly the same spot in the eye? Can they differ under certain circumstances? And if so, what are those circumstances? Wow. wow. I honestly I do. Honestly do. <laughs> I don't know. Is Marika here? She may have left. No, I'm here. What do you think? I think I was um, following the photograph, 
but I'm not positive that they are true to the photograph. So I, I think what I, I will do is just look at more photographs and see if in reality, they always are the same in the same spot. So uh, it just it just struck me that that they weren't here. And so I thought I would get another artist's point of view on it. They don't look at they don't look odd. No, they don't. They don't. They're, they're not in the same spots, but they don't look odd to me. So it made me question whether the advice of always having them in the exact same spot was good advice or not. Wouldn't it depend on your light source? Because I know they were, so I'm thinking of where this picture was, they had a main light was coming in for the sliding glass door. But in front of them, they may have had an overhead light on. I bet that has something to do with it. Yeah, I would, I would think so as well. So anyway, thank you for uh, let me, letting me ask the question. And I think I'll just take a look at a lot of pictures of Oz. Now I think we're all going to do that. <laughs> yeah. OK, any other quick questions here? I'm going to stop sharing again. Well, thank you, Jean. This is wonderful. I think everybody um, appreciated. And um, if anybody, as Jean said, has a painting where they made the changes and then, you know, would like either myself or Jean to, you know, you could forward it to me and I can forward it to Jean if you wanted some additional comments. Totally up to you. Mm -hmm. And um, Oh, Susan, Dolores had asked if you couldn't share the process of getting the artwork critiqued, and I thought it might be a good opportunity. But I also have a suggestion that maybe if people are getting their artwork critiqued, that they need to attend. Yes, but you're saying that to the people who aren't here. I know, I know, but maybe we can pass it on or make that one of the rules. Because it, it's, <laughs> I mean, people, other people might want to be critiqued, but they missed out because... Right. Other people, and it's also not fair to the artist doing the critique. Anyway, that's just my suggestion. Yes, yeah, that. and, and that's that. a great suggestion. I think Jean agrees. <laughs> yeah, we thought of that too. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, so I'm, I'm not sure, go ahead, Jean, say it again. We were surprised they weren't here, the couple people. Yes, and they were, everybody was reminded. So, you know, again, um, Maybe it was me, maybe I sent the wrong link. I don't know, ooh. Um, but um, Vicki, when you say the, the uh, process, what do you mean? Well, I'm not sure that's what Dolores had requested. I guess maybe how to get her artwork critique. That's how, I, how I understood it. Dolores, oh, okay. do you wanna type in anything? Um, I, uh, where, who do we contact to have our art critiqued? So. Well, Right now, um, so when we, this will be an ongoing feature and the next critique will be in August and it will be by um, the artist, uh, Julie Gilbert Pollard. And she will also be doing a workshop with us. And um, if you go on the website, on the homepage, there will be a button to register for the next one. And if you get accepted, you'll get an email that says how to submit your images. And I guess, according to Vicki, one of the new criteria is gonna be, if you, if you can't be there for the critique, you don't get in. So um, that's funny. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, you, you register first, then you get an email telling you how to submit your images. And maybe some of the people who got a critique this time um, could speak to how that worked for them. Was the process easy? Or do you have any suggestions for us on that? Because this is our second one of doing this. And we do think it's very valuable. And I think people are appreciating it. So I don't know. Anybody? It, was a, it was a fantastic, it was a very easy, smooth experience and very Actually, people like me who are just entering into this field, it was very encouraging. Yeah, very easy. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank, you. Um, thank you. Very yeah. valuable. Yeah, and the images, then when they come to me, we put them in a Dropbox folder. 
um, Jean, our artist for this time, and again, we can't thank you enough, uh, gets access to that. And then we give them a couple of weeks, maybe less, I don't know what I did, uh, to look at the painting <laughs> and do a critique and then give them, put them back in Dropbox. And then I put a PowerPoint presentation together and roll it out to y'all, hopefully yeah. uh, to be able to let you know. So Jean, how was it for you? It was, I thought you had all the work. It was really fun <laughs> for me. <laughs> That's good, I like to hear that. And, I, and I'm not used to using Dropbox, but um, it was, it was fine. Yeah. Okay, well, good. Yeah, so um, that's basically the process. So we'll be we'll be putting that register button out there on the homepage again. And again, if you don't get selected for the next one, your name will just remain on the list um, for the following one. And for this year, as I said, we'll have one in August with um, Julie Gilbert Pollard. We'll have one with... Um, Who's the next one after that? David Lobenberg is gonna give one as well. Frank Eber is gonna give one. And I think I'm missing somebody, but I can't remember. So um, it, it's gonna be ongoing. We're gonna do it next year as well. So, you know, you, it's not one and done, you won't miss it. So if you wanna register, you just register on that button and your name will just keep moving to the top if we get more than 10 per month for that session. So anyway. Thank you, Jean. I Thank love you. you for doing this. I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully you guys will, uh, you know, when I send out the workshops for next year, y'all sign up for her workshop because she's awesome. Thank you so much, Susan. Yeah. And you guys can email me with any questions you have about the program or session. So, all right. Thank you guys awesome. so much. We're going to end. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.